In Arizona, across the nation, are talking about the severity mm -hmm. of the punishment Sarver is facing. Yeah, it's also worth looking at the social and the legal impacts of what the Sun's owner has done. Elliot is working this part of the story live outside the Footprint Center with more on this. Elliot. Hey, Yetta and Jamie, I spoke with Elizabeth Tate, who is a civil rights attorney here in Phoenix. She was not surprised about the NBA's punishment of Sarver, but between potential lawsuits for his past actions and little room for second chances in his future, she wonders how much longer Sarver is going to remain the owner of the Sons of Mercury. While they did what they did, this could be the beginning of the end for him. Civil rights attorney Elizabeth Tate is no stranger to taking on powerful figures in large organizations. After Robert Sarver was found to have engaged in racist, sexist and abusive behavior, she believes more lawsuits could be coming his way. What I suspect is going to happen is that there may be more lawsuits, but if uh, the organization is anything like the ones that I sue, there will be big risk defenses that are that are put up. Tate believes Sarver and the Sons will use the league's investigation and findings of Sarver using the N-word multiple times of making inappropriate comments towards women and other team employees as evidence that the team has already been punished and that the training program Sarver must take moving forward are ways he and the team are taking action. In response to the NBA's punishment, the NAACP released a statement saying the NBA's response is shameful. Finding a billionaire 10 million is nothing but a speeding ticket. This is far from accountability. Tate expects those directly impacted by Sarver's past actions to become inspired by statements like these. There are definitely more rep repercussions down the line. Um, there are people who may be feeling like they are bold enough to speak up now. Tate says the key is whether or not any evidence of discrimination is within the statute of limitations, which she says, depending on the type of lawsuit filed, could range from 300 days to up to four years. But no matter what Sarver's legal future holds, Tate expects him to be closely monitored by the NBA for the rest of his time as the Sun's owner. The people that gave Sarver his punishment probably want to take a wait and see approach and see if he's going to reform and I think that um, that's definitely going to be a, a gamble, and it's going to really depend on him as to how seriously he takes what happened. Of course, as Nick mentioned earlier, Sarver did release a statement taking responsibilities for his actions and apologizing to those that he hurt. But for what it's worth, as Nick also said, Sarver also said that he didn't agree with all of the NBA's findings. Live in Phoenix, Elliot Polikoff, Arizona's family. Elliot, thank you. Some Suns fans we spoke to today told us they think Sarver got off easy in light of the findings. In fact, some say he should be forced to sell the team. That he should be suspended forever, you don't do that. Like, in one year is, like, so short. Yeah, I don't think it's enough. I think, yeah, I think, I don't know about selling the team, but it should be more. He needs to be held more accountable. I think uh, he, they should fire him. I don't think that's, that's just set an example for the organization that that's allowed to happen and you get a little slap on the wrist. For him, that money's not an issue. So I think it needs to be a bigger deal and a bigger issue. And I think he needs to deserve to be fired or else what example are we setting for the Phoenix Suns? It's important to point out in the report, there were no findings that Sarver's conduct was motivated by racial intent, which may have been one of the key reasons Sarver wasn't forced to sell the team. We'll be keeping a close eye on the story for the very latest developments. Set straight to your phone. Download our free AZ Family news app.